but when it's so blatant, you know. And the thing is, people are like, well, why did you report it? Well, first of all, A, I would have lost my job, and B, um, you know, who... You know, this person is the medical doctor in charge, and, like, who am I to question her sort of authority on this? And it would be really super hard to prove to the FDA what she was up to. But here's an example. Unless I gathered all that info and gave it to him, which was, would have been impossible to do. So. Yeah, well, this is uh, down the road now. Look at how they approved in the early 80s. What we now know is Prozac, and they knew then it caused massive increases in suicides, but they removed that from the study, and then now it's been a, you know, proven scientifically the whole family caused mood swings, violent uh, you know, actions. It, 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 it destroys people's normal uh, inhibition towards uh, violent outbreaks. It, reviewed, it, it removes that uh, dopamine suppressor, and this is what the scientists say, uh, that keeps people, keeps some other from chopping her one-year-old's arms off and dancing around with a dead body on the roof. And I hate to get, you know, you take a totally normal woman, she's put on this, and she goes completely insane, then they throw her in prison for it. Uh, when, uh, you know, every mass shooter we've had in the schools has been on these uh, these drugs. Uh, now... Well, it's kind of like drugs like, um, I think Vioxx is one of them, that, or Celebrex Vioxx, that they found out oops, you know, they're no better than taking ibuprofen, and then they have all these horrible side effects, and they're like, oops, all this data was someplace locked in a file cabinet at at the company. Yeah, it turned and, out they uh, knew it caused heart attacks. They knew yeah. Vioxx was going to kill, and, and that was Merck again, wasn't it? Uh, I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, it's just Merck, you know, Merck, I, Merck. I, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I hurt my back once and uh, took Vioxx, and I swelled up. My, I mean, I became incredible puffy person and i'm like this is crap and i never took it again and then years later it's like thank god you know so um but yeah it's it's very scary to uh know how lax oversight there is and how much kind of trust goes into this and you know every time i see these ads about i i love my you know grandmother so this is why i'm doing this and i'm like oh what a bunch of baloney it's all about money you know, and with the big pharma. Well, the bottom line is, you've been at at many levels of the studies that are being done, and you're telling yeah. us what's also come out in the mainstream news that uh, these uh, a lot of these trials are as crooked as a dog's hind leg. Uh, completely, and you know the even by the own. This was years ago. The own uh, FDA's own statistics that fifty three percent of all drugs that went into clinical trials to be tested were found to be toxic. So. Um, that should, you know, <laughs> give you some pause right there. I, I would never go on a clinical trial unless, even if I was, you know, dying basically because um, not that we don't have to test new medicines and things like that, but, you know, people get very false hopes, and you're, you're an uber guinea pig at that point. Well, Austin, you know? Texas is a big center of testing, and I have a friend who does this because she'll get four or $5,000 and and I, I talked to her, and I said, don't you understand the, the higher-paying ones are the more dangerous ones? And she had one almost kill her. She had to go to the hospital. She swole up, red spots all over her. And they were testing a cancer drug on her, and she didn't even have cancer. And, uh, you know, she's finally stopped doing it. But, but you know, that's pretty sick when our own – the only thing we've got left in our economy for people to make money who have college degrees is going in and taking deadly drugs. Right. And, you know, they're pushing uh... – now they're doing a big push towards, you know, minorities and science and stuff like that to go into biotech. And I'm like, geez, why would you want to do that to anybody? <laughs> you know, it's it's a really shady business. And the, their whole goal is to get bought out by a bigger company and they work you to death. And, you know, you'd be better off in academia. So they're and, really uh, targeting right now the uh, legal aliens. Yeah. And um, so anyway, what I, what I thought we would sort of talk about next is, um, well, in the HPV vaccine... Yeah, yeah I mean, let's go the, over that. Let's go over the most egregious stuff you've witnessed. Okay. With the HPV vaccine, I, it's basically going into third world countries, you know, in Latin America and other different places, and just basically shooting up these poor little pre-adolescent schoolgirls 
with, you know, and they line this up through the school, and but they won't give it to the the, the HPV vaccine to the boy. Uh, reproductive problems. Right, and there and there's no long term studies on this, and um, and basically with uh, they're finding out now there's more and more paralysis, Bell's palsy. There's grand mal seizures are very very common. And like in little uh, 12-year-old girls, as I said before, they've died of blood clots from it. So they're really targeting school aid. They're going into schools, and they're really targeting these these little girls that are going to school. And their parents are kind of confused because in third-world countries, they're not kind of up-to-date on a lot of things. And they and they are, they get very confused and think that they're being cured of cancer or they won't get cancer ever if they get this shot. Well, well, I've seen polls. Education. I've seen polls in the U.S., uh, Cynthia, mm-hmm. where, and the way the ads were on, it sounds like you're being cured of cancer. And, and and they think all cancers, even here in the U.S., women are bringing their daughters in. So so they're they're clearly playing that. Now, now to be clear from the documents I was reading, but you're the expert on this, and I pulled some articles up on it as well, they were testing HPV before it was even approved here in the third world. Right. And, um, you know, and they can do that because third world countries have very lax oversight, very lax institutional review boards. You can pretty much just buy, you know, a study. So, you know, it's not like they're just going in and randomly pulling people off the street and, you know, shooting them up with this vaccine. They get approval such as it is, which is usually not as strict or, you know, as the U.S. or the U.K. or Germany or something like that. So in these countries, they're pretty much, they can be pretty much bulldozed around by, you know, any big pharmaceutical company that comes in and maybe throws some cash their way. So, so And that was founded. So they can claim it's all kosher and legal, but only because in, in some place like Peru, uh, or or different states of India, or in uh, areas of Central Africa, or on the Gold Coast, places like mm-hmm. Nigeria, they can go in. Now, I've also seen reports come out, and, and I talked about the session, you said, yes, that goes on. There's no reason to not fully produce the vaccines on the drugs, and the GMO drugs is really what they are, uh, mm-hmm. the, the genetic altering uh, sequences, in the west where the main plants are and then ship it there they are they are creating sub labs or factories uh where they are uh preparing the final vaccine which also allows uh, more control and more anonymity and again the world health health organization has been caught adding a very expensive synthetic hormone in over a hundred factories uh to the tetanus shot and of course you're a scientist you understand how that works and then it would sterilize the women but uh, please continue yeah, so basically the big pharmas come into China and India. And I do have to say that a lot of Indian pharmaceutical companies are based on the old British educational system. So in a lot of ways they're, you know, they're actually pretty good pharmaceutical companies when it comes to drugs. China is very scary because all the big pharmas I work for and friends of mine that still work for them are now going to China to manufacture their drugs. So a lot of our drugs are being made in China where they put plastic in the milk. Almost all our drugs are being made in China. They're shutting down manufacturing plants in the U.S. um, to make things, and it's going to China. So the big pharmaceuticals go to China. They get their little thing factories up and going, their little manufacturing plants. And then from there, they will then help other developing countries, let's say Indonesia, some part of Indonesia, set up their own manufacturing. So it's not like, you know, Merck goes into Indonesia. Merck goes into China that goes into Indonesia. So it's always kind of now being done through a conduit. It's fenced. That, it's being fenced. Yeah. And, you know, on some level, if it was totally kosher, it's like, oh, good, these countries are now sustainable to make their own drugs and their own medicines and we're helping them get up to world health organization standards but you know china is very scary and um you know you you just don't know what's being put in these drugs well well, china's also signed on to the eugenics model in the treaties they signed in the 80s to uh, to get the imf and world bank funding we know the imf and world bank also funded peru and india to sterilize their women uh, and to give them injections that did that. So they've all been caught doing this is the uh, point. Imagine what we don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, and it's very hard to get in those countries because they're very militarily controlled, and um, you know, and they have a lot of consultants from the big pharma that are being paid and you know subsidized to come in and and basically you know help these people set up their own vaccine manufacturing plants and drug manufacturing plants, which on the face looks good, like oh good they're getting you know expert help, but you're kind of wondering eek, you know what's going on here. So. Um, that, that's very scary because you don't know where these vaccines are coming from and how they're being made. And there's really sketchy oversights, especially. I mean, they can certify them because they'll look at their protocols on how they make things and sterilize things. But that doesn't mean that that's what they're following. Well, it's would... like millions of Chinese citizens getting uh, melamine, which destroys your kidneys just once or twice getting any of it. And they just don't care. They said, well, we knew that... Melamine shows on the meter.